Hello everyone, welcome to this next video on classical mechanics. In this video, we shall be seeing Hamiltonian's variational principle and its relation to Lagrange equation. So now, uh, can you see this pendulum? In this pendulum, I have this bob over here and it is attached by this string to this rigid support over here. So now, uh, this, is, this is the initial position for this pendulum and I can now move this pendulum over to this position. Now at this position, this pendulum can take various paths and it can have various oscillations depending on uh, in which direction I release this bob. If I release this bob, uh, so it will tend to go in this direction and if I uh, pull the bob towards myself and then release it, it will uh, go with this direction and if I push it a little backward in that case it will go in this direction so you see this pendulum can have many paths and uh, so sim similar to this pendulum we have in other mechanical system the tendency of any mechanical system is to follow the shortest path which would take the lesser amount of time and this path is usually known as extremum that means it would take the minimum possible path for it the word extremum it means we are either talking about minimum or we are talking about maximum so the motion of any mechanical system is defined using this action and what is this it is a functional uh, which is defined as uh, integration from t1 to t2 L dt where what is this L? L is again a function of the uh, generalized coordinates and generalized velocities and time. So this L basically is a function of qj's the generalized coordinates, qj dots the generalized velocities and the independent variable time and this L the Lagrange it is ca calculated by taking the difference of kinetic energy and potential energy. So this action uh, is defined and uh, this action has to be minif minimized, you will see in a moment how. Before that, let us first differentiate between this conservative system and non-conservative system. In the previous video, I have discussed about conservative system, a system in which total mechanical energy of the system remains conserved and in non-conservative system, this energy do not remain conserved. That means we also have some frictional forces and dissipative forces acting on the system. Moreover, the forces in the conservative system, they are derived from the potential function which are ordinary in nature and not generalized. Whereas, in non-conservative system, these forces, they are derived from generalized potentials which are also a function of velocity dependent, which are also velocity dependent. And in this case, the potential or the potential energy V, this is purely a function of generalized coordinates. That means V only depends upon Q and not Q dot. But here, so in this case, if you take uh, the derivative of v with respect to q dot as it does not depend on q dot it would come out to be zero but in this case v is a function of both the generalized coordinates as well as the generalized velocities so now as we were talking about what path does uh, any system would follow naturally this uh, this point this pendulum it will tend to go by this straight line path or you can say in this path uh, because it is the shortest possible path. So this Hamiltonian's variational principle, what does it say? It says that the motion of a system from moving uh, from time t1 to time t2 is such that the action defined by this functional, this gives you an extreme value for the path of motion and this extreme value that would be the path which would uh, which that object or that mechanical system would follow so this describes the motion for any conserved mechanical system and we have another definition for this hamilton's variation principle it says that the variation of this action the quantity action this delta it represents variation of this action it is 
zero. So, and this is known as the principle of least action. You can relate this thing to calculus of variation. As uh, in calculus of variation, we know the necessary condition for any differentiable functional to have a extremum is that its variation should vanish. So here also, you see, for this functional to have an extreme value, its variation should vanish. So these statements are both true together. So now let's move on to calculate this functional. So we'll take the variation of this action and put it equal to zero. So our action was this thing. Now L, L is a function of gen uh, generalized coordinates as well as generalized velocities. So when you differentiate this, you will get now L this is a function of Q1, Q2 up to Qn and this is also a function of Q1 dot up to Qn dot. So when you take its partial derivative with respect to it uh, when you take its partial derivative with respect to time or simply then you will get del L by del Q1 into the variation of del 1 of q1 plus del l by del q2 into the variation of q2 and so on we have del l by del qn and its variation with respect to qn and then we can take the uh, derivative with respect to these coordinates the partial derivative with respect to these coordinates so it would give you these values right del l by del q n dot and then the variation in q n dot. So summing these quantities over here we have this first uh, sum and and the second these quantities uh, into this sum and. So let us substitute this value of variation over here. So we have this expression right. So now we can separate the terms the first terms come here as such for the second term we can integrate it term by term because there is this derivative variation of this generalized velocities and we wanted to get rid of this dot so we have to integrate it so we can consider this to be the first function this to be the second function so you see uh, integrating it by parts we have first function as such and then the derivative uh, the integration of this function that would give you the variation of qj only and not qj dot and substituting the limits from t1 to t2 minus integration derivative of our first function and then the integration of second as such so here it would be del l by del qj dot right so we have this thing this is equal to zero so now because we have fixed the coordinates at the end points therefore this variation at both the time interval initial time interval and final time interval that gives no variation so it is equal to zero so overall this quantity it becomes zero because of this factor so we are only left with these quantity these two quantities and uh, we can take this variation of qj common so we'll have this expression now all these qj they are independent to each other by virtue of the definition of generalized coordinates therefore this coefficients these are equal to zero because if you have some three vectors say a b c and they are linearly independent to each other that means we can find three scalars say capital a capital b and capital c such that if you have capital a into small a plus capital b into small b plus capital c into small c equal to zero it implies a equals to b equals to c they are equal to zero this condition from this condition we can have these coefficients equal to zero and how many such coefficients are there there are n such coefficients so we have n equations of such kind now these equations they are known as the lagrange equation of motion now let us discuss uh, one one should remember this uh, these equations and now let us discuss several cases the first one is for conservative system in conservative system 
वी हैव एल इज इक्वल टू टी माइनस वी वेयर टी इज द कैनेटिक एनर्जी एंड वी इज द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एवरीवेयर बट फॉर कंजर्वेटिव सिस्टम दिस पोटेंशियल एनर्जी दिस इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ क्यू ओनली एंड नॉट क्यू डॉट दैट मीन्स दिस डेरेवेटिव दिस टर्म इज इक्वल टू जीरो इन कंजर्वेटिव सिस्टम सो लेट अस सब्सटीट्यूट दी वैल्यू ऑफ एल ओवर हेयर एज टी माइनस वी सो वी इंस्टेड ऑफ एल वी राइट टी माइनस वी हेयर एंड हेयर देन वी कैन सेपरेट आउट दी टर्म्स फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट वन यू विल गेट डेल टी बाय डेल क्यू जे एंड फ्रॉम द सेकेंड वन यू विल गेट माइनस डेल वी बाय डेल क्यू जे एंड सिमिलरली ऑन द राइट एंड साइड सो नाउ यू सी दिस क्वान्टिटी दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज आर पोटेंशियल इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ क्यू जे डॉट देर फॉर वी आर ओनली लेट विद दिस टर्म सो दिस टर्म ऑन द राइट एंड साइड माइनस डेल वी बाय डेल क्यू जे दिस इज नोन एज द जनरलाइज फोर्स वेन आर सिस्टम इज कंजर्वेटिव देर फॉर वी कैन रिप्लेस इट बाय दिस सो फॉर कंजर्वेटिव सिस्टम यू शुड रिमेंबर दिस फॉर्म ऑफ लेग्रांज इक्वेशन बिकॉज हेयर टी इज काइनेटिक एनर्जी एंड दिस क्यू जे दैट इज द जनरलाइज फोर्स एसोसिएटेड विद द सिस्टम सो नाउ फॉर द नॉन कंजर्वेटिव केस अगेन वी हैव एल इज इक्वल टू टी माइनस वी बट नाउ वी हेयर इज द जनरलाइज पोटेंशियल एंड इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द जनरलाइज कोऑर्डिनेट्स एंड जनरलाइज विलोसिटीज द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ जनरलाइज कोऑर्डिनेट्स सो इन दिस केस दिस क्वान्टिटी this quantity is not equal to zero therefore we have while substituting the value of l over here we have t minus v instead of this so sub, uh, solving this and shifting all the t quantities to the left and v quantities to the right this whole terms is His is term as Q J. Where what is this Q J? Q J is the generalized force. So we one should remember this equation when the system is non-conservative. So uh, you saw in Lagrange equation of motion we have the concept of energies, the associated kinetic energies and potential energies. But in Newton. Uh, Loss. We have the definition of force as mass into acceleration. So here, forces are used to define the motion, and uh, whereas in Lagrange equations, we have energies which define the system. So therefore, this Lagrange, this is purely a scalar quantity, whereas Newton's equation include force. Therefore, that would be a vector quantity, and lagrange approach is easier to solve and it is general for any system this formulation is generalized because we use the generalized coordinates instead of any particular kind of coordinate system for any specific problem so this concept is more general as in the sense of newton's approach the third case is uh, a system involving non potential forces in conservative system we saw the potential force component f that is available from velocity independent ordinary potential so that would be a function of ordinary potential and in non conservative system this potential force component is velocity dependent generalized potential but there are also some forces which are not derived from potential function for example coriolis force or lorentz force in coriolis force you see this appear due to rotational motion and it found in many rotational uh, things whereas this lorentz force you find this on a charged particle which is moving in a magnetic field so in such kind of forces they are not derived from any kind of potential that means they are not a function of potential v so for that we can denote the non potential force by this qj dash so the lagrange equation of motion they simply become this thing is equal to minus qj dash where qj dash that is a function of generalized coordinates and generalized velocities and the variable time so this is a more gen in more general sense when the force corresponding potential force that is not depending upon potential so these forces are known as non potential forces and such systems are non potential uh, non potential system uh, 
systems with non potential forces so in this video we saw hamilton's principle that is both a necessary and sufficient condition for lagrange equation of motion and in the next coming videos we shall see various applications of lagrange equation well that is it for this video thank you for watching